far of January. So that leaves us today, the last day of 2022. Uh, what theme do you think a preacher could come up with today to share as his sermon topic? What do you think the theme is going to be, Ali? Yeah. Uh, any ideas, Naomi? What do you think today, the last day of the year, if you were a minister, and one day you may be, what do you think the Lord might place on your heart to speak about today, particularly if you're like a really lazy minister who's not very creative in coming up with ideas. What do you think I'm going to preach on today? Sherry, any ideas? Yeah. Yeah, New Year's resolutions. Yeah, I know, that old favourite. Of course I am going to preach on. Well, kind of. See, when I thought about this topic this week, I thought there are plenty of places in Scripture that say, look, you know, as a follower of Christ, don't plan too far out in advance. You know, we need to keep one eye on the not yet, but also keep a, an eye on the now, the now and the not yet. And so I'm thinking of Proverbs 27, which says, the first verse says, don't, don't plan and brag about tomorrow, just deal with the now. The end of James's letter, well, not the end of it, but chapter 4, the end of chapter 4, he says at the end of chapter 4, let me, let me speak directly to those people who say next year I'm planning to go to that city and uh, do this and that and make some money. He says, don't do that. You don't know what tomorrow even brings. Just plan for today. Enjoy the blessings of the now. In fact, what does Jesus say about tomorrow? Don't worry about it. Let tomorrow take care of itself. So when it comes to the end of a year and planning for the year ahead, I'm a little bit torn as a speaker because there are plenty of places in Scripture that, that talk about just, just dealing with the issues of today. And so that's what I'd like to talk about today. Not so much about New Year's resolutions, but about daily disciplines that you may incorporate into your daily walk with the Lord over the coming year. Any Chinese speakers here in the... Um, how do you say happy... I know it's got something to do with fat choy in there, but... Ha, ha, no, that's Cantonese, isn't it? You speak Mandarin, do you? How do you say happy new year in Mandarin? The kid, you're pointing to the kids. No, she's pointing back to you. What is it? Okay, well, I'm going to be taking... I'm going to do an exam at the end, so listen carefully. How do you say happy new year in Mandarin? That one. And if I was to speak Cantonese, is it gung ho fat choy or something like that? What's something like that? Yeah, something like that. Okay, all right. She's looking at me rather weirdly. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for mangling the uh, this wonderful um, uh, Mandarin uh, language because, of course, in Mandarin, uh, you've got um, a word can mean four completely different things depending upon whether you go up or go down or say it straight or yeah it's it's what a wonderful language um yeah uh so that's how you say it in in uh in um and of course the chinese i mean we're, we're celebrating in our culture the end of the year today but um in china in in, in china the end of the year is not until the end of january isn't it it can vary depending upon the moon but I think it's the 22nd of January next month, I think. And it's the year of the rabbit. Yes, year of the rabbit. Uh, and um, which is great because I follow the South Sydney Rugby League team and they're... <laughs> it's going to be the year of the rabbit Uh So different cultures celebrate, celebrate their end of the year at different times. The Ethiopians celebrate it, like some parts of Africa celebrate. Any Ethiopians here? No Ethiopians? You need to outreach to some Ethiopian folk there. Uh, any, uh, any, any folk of, uh, of Jewish origin? I know we spiritually, 
we're of Jewish origin, but what about um, ethnically? Any, any folk of Jewish origin here? Of course, they celebrate their end of the year when? Around about the end of September, early October, don't they? Uh, and their new year is called what? Rosh Hashanah. Rosh for being the Hebrew word for head and Hashanah being um, the Hebrew word for the year, head of the year. So you can, any you know in Jewish folk at the end of September, just uh, 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 wish them a, uh, well, wish them a Shana Tova, a good year ahead, a uh, good year ahead. So, but here in Australia, of course, here in, in most of the English-speaking world, what do we say? Happy New Year. So when it comes to this new year and reflecting on daily disciplines that you might like to incorporate into your walk with the Lord over the coming 12 months, unless the Lord returns sooner, there are four New Testament texts I'd like to share with you this morning that will back up perhaps these four daily disciplines. Now, there's obviously more. You may, in fact, think of a few more. And if you think of a few more, tell me at the end of the service as you're walking out because I'll write them down and I'll use those next year. But the first one, I think, is one of my go-to New Testament texts for a new year. And you find it in Paul's letter to the Philippians. In fact, it's Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, and we're going to start halfway through verse 13 of Philippians chapter 3. And by the way, for those who are watching online, great to have you with us here at the Walls End Seventh-day Adventist Church today. We're talking about daily disciplines we can incorporate into the new year. We're looking at some New Testament texts for the new year. And the first one we're going to read is Philippians chapter 3, halfway through verse 13, it says this. And this, the context that Paul writes it in is, is he's reflecting on the forgiveness given to him, Paul, by God. The forgiveness given to him and each one of us by our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And he says, in reflecting on this forgiveness, he says this, but one thing I do, do you know this text? It's quite a famous text. It's my go-to text when it comes to reflecting on, on, uh, on, on things of a new year. One thing I do, what's the next verse? Forgetting what is behind, and perhaps there might be some of you reflecting on the year about to end this evening and saying, I'm glad that's going to be behind us. Forgetting what is behind, Paul says, and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. Forgetting what is behind, and Paul, when he reflected on his life before Christ, had a lot, a lot of things that he needed to forget. And so here is the first daily discipline I'd like to share from that New Testament text for the coming new year. The first daily discipline is this, forgetting our failures. Now, when we get to the end of a day, I can guarantee you there will be things that you will have done each day that you'll look back and say, I wished I had done that differently. I mean, if you've ever spent a day parenting, you will know there are things that you do as a dad, as a mum, as a parent, where you think, I could have done that differently. What Paul says to us from 2,000 years ago is this, forgetting what is behind at the end of each day and straining towards what lays ahead, I press on to win the goal for which Christ has called me heavenwards. If at the end of each day you can 
bow and pray and recognize the failures of that day and give them over to God and say, tomorrow I will do better. Second verse that I'd like to read to you comes from, uh, comes from the next page over, if you're reading uh, a, um, a hard copy version of Scripture, Colossians chapter 3. If the first daily discipline from the New Testament uh, for a new year is this forgetting our failures, the second daily discipline I'd like to share with you comes from Colossians chapter 3. And, uh, and verse 13. What does it say there? Can you read that in your, uh, in your translation? Bear with each other, Paul says to this church in Colossia. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. When we reflect on the mistakes we've made and at the end of each day ask the Lord to help us forget those failures so as we can press on towards the goal for which Christ has called us heavenwards, one of the other challenges at the end of each day is to forgive those mistakes others have made against us. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Here is the challenge for me, and it may be a challenge for you too. The second daily discipline, if the first one is, is to forgive our failures. The second is, at the end of each day, is to reduce our resentments. There's a wonderful parable that Jesus shares in Matthew 18 when he talks about reducing our resentments towards other people. It comes after a conversation he has with his disciples in, talk, in terms of talking about forgiving others, forgiving the mistakes others have made against you. And Peter comes to him and says, and Peter was one who held a grudge. And he comes to Jesus and says, how many times do I need to forgive someone who's, who's done something wrong against me? Now, by the way, I'm not talking here about significant crimes someone has perpetrated against another person. There are things that require an earthly justice. What I'm talking about here is that time that you're driving to church and that 19-year-old in a white ute with pea plates on tailgates you and then cuts you off at the roundabout and you take that annoyance and resentment for the rest of the day. Or that time that that customer of yours having a bad day themselves, spoke to you harshly. And when you get home and the kids say, can you play a game with us, Dad? No! You kids, get out of my hair! You don't do that, David, do you? Is it just me? I think it's just me. I'm talking about those things that happened each day that when you continue to run it through your mind, resentment builds up against that person. And so Peter says, how many times do I need, do I need to forgive someone for those things they've done against me? And what does Jesus say to Peter in terms of how many times? He calls upon a wonderful number in Daniel chapter 9. What does, he, what does he, how many times does he say? 70 times 7. And in the vernacular of the day, he's saying you need to forgive him a lot. And then Jesus gives this incredible parable. Do you remember the parable, Lincoln? Do you know the parable where Jesus says that there was a king 
And there was someone who owned the king money. Do you remember in Matthew 18 how much money this person owned the, owed the king? 10,000 bags of gold. I mean, I think Jesus was just coming up with the biggest number he could imagine. This person, this servant of the king, owed the king 10,000 bags of gold. And he couldn't repay And what did the king do to the servant? What did the king say to the servant who owed him 10,000 bags of gold? What did he say? I forgive you. Your debt is wiped clean. 10,000 bags of gold. This is the parable. And as the servant then walks out of the king's Uh, the master's uh, uh, chambers, who does he see, Naomi? He sees someone who, guess what, owes him money. Now, bear in mind, two minutes ago, he was just forgiven for 10,000 bags of gold. Now, the person he sees, the servant, the person that he sees, guess how much is owed to him? Guess how much that person owes the servant? A hundred little bags of silver. Ten thousand bags of gold. A hundred little bags of silver. And what does the servant do? Do you remember the story, Lincoln? Walks up to him. Where's my money? He says, oh, I haven't got it on me today. Puts his hand around his throat and starts choking him. Give me my money. Two minutes earlier, 10,000 bags of gold, wiped clean. Now, 100 bags of silver, give me my money. And the king's servants see him. Where does this unforgiving servant end up? It should have been a day of celebration because he had been forgiven much. But where does now, at the end of this day, This servant end up, ends up in prison. You know, as Jesus told that parable of an unforgiving servant who ends up in prison, there are people held prisoner today, unforgiving servants today held prisoner, but they're prisons of resentment. Prisons of anger, prisons of depression. And what scripture says to us at the end of each day is yes, forget your failures, but also forgive others to reduce your resentments. You know, there are times where The sins and mistakes of others do require justice. But there are times where we can simply say, I have a right for justice here, but I'm giving that right over to God. And that very act that Jesus was talking about reduces those resentments that hold people in prison. So... Daily disciplines, forget your failures at the end of each day. If you can, at the end of each day, bow your head when the sun sets and actively say, that was a mistake, can I leave that in the past? I'm going to press on towards the goal for which Christ has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. If at the end of each day we can forget our failures, if at the end of each day we can actively forgive others, for the mistakes of the day, that will reduce your resentments. The third daily discipline I'd like to share. How many was there, Ali? I think there was only four. We're going to run through these fairly quickly, okay? The third third comes from um, uh, Matthew chapter 7. And it's towards the end of this uh, wonderful speech that Jesus gives on a hilltop on the banks of the... Sea of Galilee, the Lake of the Galilee. You can go there today to where Jesus uh, 
shared this wonderful speech. It's called the Sermon on the Mount, and there's a church built on the spot they believed he delivered it from. Uh, And there is some wonderful advice through Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. You could live a lifetime and grow in your, in your walk with God simply by reading just Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. If all you had in Scripture was Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount, if that's all you had, you could live a lifetime of growing in God's grace just reflecting on those words. But I'd like to just read one particular verse, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. And it's a famous verse. It's a famous verse. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. What does it say? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. In fact, in the King James translation, that's Shakespearean English, what does it say? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's become known as the golden rule for relationships. Some people might think that the golden rule is he who has the most gold rules, but that's not the case. The golden rule is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And when you interact with other people, thinking how would I like to be treated, let me treat this person the same way, when you live your life interacting with people in accordance with the golden rule, your relationships will be better. Seems obvious, doesn't it? But why don't we do it? And so, the third daily discipline is this. As we reflect on the golden rule, is feed your friendships. If you can get to the end of each day, and imagine some emotional bank account with the important people in your life. And as you close the day at sunset and say, have I made more deposits in that relationship than withdrawals, then that is a good day. Forget your failures. Reduce your resentments. Feed your friendships. And the last one comes from, um, comes from um, uh, James. James chapter 4, verse 8. And I know this verse from the Colin Buchanan song. James chapter 4, verse 8. For those who know the Colin Buchanan song, what's the verse? Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. We're talking here about just having some daily disciplines that will help us draw near to God at the end, or draw nearer to God at the end of each day, forgetting our failures, reducing our resentments, feeding our friendships. The last one is this, spending time with our Saviour. When you look at the Lord's life, the second person, Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity. It's incredible how much time he spent in prayer. And so a daily discipline at the end of each day, if you can reflect on the day and know that you spent some time with God, maybe got up a little bit earlier, maybe took some time out at lunchtime, maybe sent some quick SMSs up to the Lord and Saviour during the day, maybe at the end of each day, just close each day with prayer. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Those, um, uh, and know that you've spent time with your saviour. As we finish up our talk this morning, our New Year's talk, reflecting on four daily disciplines you might incorporate in your life over the next day and week and month and maybe year. Forgetting your failures reducing your resentments, feeding your friendships and spending time with your saviour. Is there something else that the Lord is placing on your heart to incorporate into your life each day? Is 
God speaking to you about something in the coming year that you need to do more of each day? Is there something he is saying to you to stop doing? Is there something that he's asking you to change? If he's speaking to you this morning, then listen. As we finish up, talking about New Testament texts for a new year and incorporating those into our daily disciplines. Let me just read to you this concluding text from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Therefore, Paul says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Yes, it is a new year. And when you're in Christ, you are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. So tonight, if you're still awake at midnight, it's not a strange time for the day to end. I like the biblical example of a day where a day ends at sunset and a new one starts. But in our culture and time, a new day, a new year ends at midnight. And if you're still awake and people are celebrating, the old is gone, the new has come, maybe you might reflect on 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old person has gone and the new one has come. At the end of each day, God gives us a chance to forget our failures to reduce our resentments, to feed our friendships and those relationships important to us and to spend time with him. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we reflect on these four texts that we've read today, my prayer, Lord, is that you have spoken through these words to each one of us today. Lord, we thank you that in you, the old is gone and the new has come. Hear our prayer. Amen.